videos. So we've got the spread here from January and it's time to put these cards over the spread and tie it all together for 2019. These are the Stranger and Stranger Ultimate Deck, New York City to London. Um, and it's really, it's just a playing card deck. But I like using them for divination because all the pictures on them are very vivid and descriptive. That's enough shuffling. The first house is the house of beginnings, and so we start in the past, because that's where everything begins. And it's governed by Aries, notorious haters, am I wrong? Uh, and the planet Mars. And is also about the sense of self. Everything starts with you. Okay, so a side note. I like to leave the end cards in decks of playing cards when I use them because usually it's the jokers and I like to use those like the fool. But these cards come with Designed by Stranger and Stranger, in collaboration with Dan and Dave. Stranger and Stranger is an award-winning packaging design and branding company. Dan and Dave are renowned magicians and pioneers of cardistry. So, what we have here is a whole dossier of people who are creating their own destiny. All right, the second house is the house of possessions and it's ruled by Taurus, which is an earth sign. And the planet Venus. So the two of hearts is very much about like a, a long lasting partnership. So I just got engaged not long ago, and we're planning our wedding at, to be a noise fest in June, probably sometime near the solstice. Um, so for it to be in the house in a house governed by Venus is reasonable, um, but also. For it to be in the house of possessions, I guess it's kind of like feeling like you own that other person's heart. So maybe that's not a totally healthy mindset. The third house is the house of communication. It's governed by Mercury and it um, it's also governed by Gemini, the twins, 
which is an air sign. So there's a lot of just swift movement, quick thought. The three of hearts. Well, some people would say, oh, you've got all these hearts. That's like a good sign, right? But this heart is notorious for being about heartbreak or argument. So maybe there's issues with the communication where you're not always able to really rattle it off the cuff with your partner. Like, you guys are usually fine, obviously, but every once in a while you just hit this disconnect where you just can't you can't get through to each other. And it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, contentious or abusive or anything like that. It's just about being on different wavelengths, I think. Um, and then the fourth house is the house of your home and family. And it's governed by Cancer and the Moon. Gecko is one of these cards that gives me a little bit of trouble, but to me, I grew up absolutely loving lizards and loving to play with them, but also understanding that it was something that I couldn't, like, own. It's this creature that's so much smaller than me, and really in a lot of ways barely knows I exist. But I love it so much. And I think that's kind of the attitude that I have regarding having actually a home of my own and being able to support myself. It's that I just am now getting to a point where I understand how to hold on to that. For so long, it was just like a lizard kind of like slipping through my fingers. The fifth house is our house. It's a very, very fine house. And it's governed by the sun, of course. And is the house of creativity and passion. The wands are a fire sign. on this particular card the king is shaking down this leprechaun for his pot of gold so yeah I think that's pretty appropriate I think as far as creativity and passion is concerned you will find it very lucrative in 2019 shake down that leprechaun don't feel any remorse look how shifty he is this is strictly a leprechaun. This is not to perpetuate any sort of stereotype about little people. Now, the sixth house is governed by Virgo and is also ruled by Mercury. It has to do with your daily life and your health. Oh, good, a skull. Well, we all have one. Uh, I think... I think it's a good time to start taking care of all those little nagging things that have been stacking up. Like your allergies, or you've been putting off getting your blood pressure tested or something like that. Um, it could get very real very quickly. And I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to be a scaremonger. I mean, obviously, we've got a lot of good stuff here. And it is very close to the immortality card. But... 
you've got these three spades and then he's like kind of crying two hearts or I guess those could be little uh, bullet holes possibly they're kind of spades but they're mostly like hearts so you know Well, it's not lost, but just keep an eye on your health, especially as it relates to your daily routines. The seventh house is the house of marriage and partnerships and is governed by the sign of Libra and sure it will be if I say that, but whatever. <laughs> the floor of hearts. And uh, she's got this red bum. I think the floor of hearts being this Kind of like you like being punished, maybe? But we're not even to the eighth house yet, which is sex, death, and other people's money. And that is a house governed by Scorpio and Pluto. I think of this card as a warning. Because look, he's got this other card up his sleeve. And the Three of Spades, that's like the Three of Swords. Let's see. Okay, okay. I have to make a revision here. I'm still familiarizing myself with this deck, to be honest with you. And I kind of knew that this would be the reading where I'd have a hard time interpreting because it's so close to my heart, yeah? This is the Turbulence in Relationships card. The Three of Hearts is close. It's very close to what I was saying, but it's more like a reckless kind of a love, like early love. So that being in the house of communication makes a lot more sense. All right, now it's really starting to pull together. And I think that I need to pull back for a minute and kind of look at all of this together. Alright, so see, this, your daily life and your health, that's right here between the advice and this inverse purification. Just absolutely go to a doctor. I mean, I'll have to heed my own advice on this one as well. Uh, for years, I have avoided getting a GP. I hate going to the doctor because there's always something about it that squicks me out so hard. Uh, like, I just don't have good experiences with doctors. Um, it's a very personal thing, you know, to have someone else examining you. And then if they say even like the tiniest little thing, it just, it really puts me off, you know. But this alignment right here really makes a lot of sense. It's time 
to go to a doctor. Um, and as far as marriage and partnerships are concerned, well, you've got these two people. You've got premeditation and then the death card immortality kind of facing each other. And between them is this little girl with the red bottom. There's something about self-punishment here in your partnerships. Uh, or maybe you kind of... You feel like you have to put your partner at ease. Which I can understand, you know, you can be a little intimidating. But... You're really looking at a partnership here of equals. And maybe you don't need to be so self-effacing with your partner. And then here, sex, death, and other people's money. You've got that card up your sleeve. And here we have death, right there. All right, time to move forward. Uh, so the ninth house is Sagittarius ruled, Jupiter ruled, higher education, travel, the extravagances, of life. This card popped out for Taurus in a really endearing way. This is the Six of Cups, Six of Hearts. Um, it's like the nostalgia card. It is something coming back from your past. So whether that is, has to do with your education or maybe uh, finally going somewhere that you've been a long time before and seeing it to be the same, um, I've had a few experiences like that. And the ways that places change can be very endearing. Um, and a lot of places will feel like home, even if you've been away for a very long time. And so the tenth house is career, and it's ruled by Capricorn and the planet Saturn. A very serious Saturn. going to come to your final resting place as far as your career is concerned. You're going to get so established that no one will ever knock you off your feet again. It's the Ten of Wands, which can be a burden, which can be very heavy. And as you see here, it's a night in repose. But you're going to get so big, they can't knock you over because you're already six feet under. And the 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes, and it's governed by Aquarius and uh, the planet Uranus. Aquarius is an air sign, but is heavily tinged with water. And <laughs> you get both the end cards this time. So, uh, the art of play. Like, you want to make money doing what you love. You want to make money uh, being your fabulous self. And I think that you have more than enough capability to do that. 
Alright, this is the final card. Uh, it's the card of endings. It's ruled by Pisces. And it has very much to do with mutable water energy where anything can happen. So this is the Jack of Swords. He's quick with his tongue. Uh, he doesn't apologize. And uh, he can be a little cold. But, and he's a, a little young still. But he's got all this cool armor. Very much that energy. Very much calculating. You're going to be able to ride in on your gigantic steampunk uh, engine and just blow them away. All right, Leo, uh, that's 2019 in a nutshell. Um, and I will be keeping up with the readings, hopefully, month by month. And I really don't think I can say any more about this. Get, any, get my foot any further into my mouth about the whole situation. So, have a good, happy new year.